entire user group for having me here. And um, I, uh, you know, I live here in the East Coast, so quite a bit of distance and time uh, difference between the two of us. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here for a second. And then we'll go from there. So what I want to talk today about is uh, mixed reality with power apps. And um, more than anything else, yes, there will be the wow factor from this demo. There will be, um, you know, the walkthrough typical demo example. But what I want to actually put forth to you guys is how do we actually land this in a business setting? And some of the things that we, um, that I spend my days thinking about and how these type of technologies can help businesses um, uh, progress or move forward or even uh, do certain things differently from what they traditionally have been doing. And um, in, as part of that, you know, open the floor for a, you know, candid discussion about mixed reality. So the agenda for today, I'm going to minimize my introduction. I think uh, Shiresh already did a pretty good job at that. Um, more than to just present some contact information. If you guys want to reach out, follow my YouTube channel, whatever, um, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to also talk about um, the basics of mixed reality, uh, reality and augmented reality. Most of you um, have probably seen an Oculus uh, display or, um, you know, mixed reality uh, device. Um, but the thing is, how do you actually get to that? How do you get to, to building out models and publishing models and making them available for an application and even in a business setting, how we, how we do that? So we'll talk about the basics. Uh, I'm not going to spend ex an exuberant amount of time on that, but certainly uh, just giving you a, this is how you get started type um, idea uh, will probably be sufficient enough for you guys to uh, move forward with it, take it forward from there and, um, and go do things on your own. By the way, uh, speaking of, um, of uh, sharing files, I have all this stuff. I'm going to just uh, put it in the link that uh, Shiresh uh, published before. So Shiresh, just send me that link and I'll upload the files at the end of this, um, of this session. Sounds good. The other thing too is uh, then we're going to dive into Power Apps Mixed Reality Components and um, talk a little bit about that, what's available from, from the Power Apps side and um, sort of certainly what those controls do and, you know, what you can expect from the, their behavior. Then uh, finally, I'm gonna go into a demo and uh, that's where we're gonna, you know, hopefully make things work. I have a backup of the app. So if you guys wanna copy all that stuff, I can send it out as part of the list of, um, of things that I'm gonna upload for you later on. So you'll get a, that app file that you can import into your environment. Okay, um, so, Let's get going. All right, so uh, Shiresh already covered um, part of my background. So that's basically summarize. More importantly, you can follow me on Twitter as my handler and um, reach out via my YouTube channel. I have tons of content there, mixed reality included, but um, a whole bunch of other stuff that I talk about um, regularly. So, you know, just be sure to go and check it out. If you like what you see, just subscribe. Uh, I typically publish uh, content just about every week, sometimes in between uh, if, uh, if there's more time. All right. Um, so let's talk about the basics. Concepts, file formats, what's that, what does Power Apps need? Because that's where things get kind of hang up. And by the way, guys, I'm not a slide person, so I actually tend to go through everything that I do live. So this is as much slide as you will see, a big title, and then I'll show you things. So let's get out of here for a second. And um, I'm gonna go to my file folder, which is what I have here. And what you gotta understand about mixed reality in reality is nothing more than 
uh, when you look at a model, which is the basis of any mixed reality environment that you're in, whether that's uh, something as sophisticated as an Oculus uh, game or a, um, or a power apps application, or even something as basic as uh, uh, Windows 3D Viewer. Uh, in reality, what you're playing with is a whole bunch of files, uh, image files that have been assembled and put together in layers and texturized, and that's what becomes a model. Traditionally, if you've heard about applications like AutoCAD or 3D CAD or any of these uh, computer assisted design uh, applications, that's the environment where you would actually build out and create your models in. Uh, this is actually low tech photography, so don't expect this to be anything super sophisticated. But if you were to put something together like a game, a mixed reality game or an augmented reality game, then you also have the sophistication of the equipment that you're using. And as many of you, uh, if, you if you've seen a uh, 3D movie or played a 3D video game, or even just experienced the, the uh, flow of a model, you know that the higher the resolution of those images, the better, um, the better that model would, will, uh, will behave and will act. Now, Power Apps has some limitations about the size of a model. I think it's 200 megabytes. That's as much size as a model can have. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, if you look at this uh, particular uh, set of files here, all I have is a, really a whole bunch of PNG files, but I also have this uh, GLTF, which is kind of, think of it as the player of those textures and images, and um, it assembles them in a way that it makes the 3D model. So I'm just going to open this GLTF. And I have, uh, this is a Windows 10 machine. It comes automatically installed with the 3D viewer. And that 3D viewer is going to then read that GLTF file. And I'm a big Star Trek fan. So I bought it today. For those of you who are Star Trek fans, you know, you can get off of mute and chair if you want. But this is one of my favorite uh, uh, ships from the uh, Starfleet. This is the Endeavor, the NCC, it's an NCC uh, type uh, badge ship. But as you can see in 3D Viewer, I can manipulate this model and rotate it and see different things of it. I can zoom into it if I wanted to with the pinch feature on my, um, on my pad, on my mouse pad. And I can do things like, you know, rotate it. I can see the ship badge uh, where, you know, the different places where it is. Now that's a that's what a 3D viewer does. Now, if I actually wanted to do mixed reality, then the question is, what is truly mixed reality? Mixed reality is nothing more than taking this uh, 3D model that you're seeing here, and now blend it, blending it in with my surrounding, with my current physical environment, and that's what actually makes this technology so interesting. So. Uh, part of uh, what is happening right now is my camera is lighting up and now you can see my face on the screen and now you can see the, the ships that are hovering over me and I can do things like manipulate it, bring it closer to my head and do quick animations if I wanted to and start swinging this thing all over the place. So you can see that it doesn't take, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of math and computing behind this to make this happen. But you can see this actually working within the uh, within the space of my of my physical environment. For those of you who have the um, the uh, Zoom viewport loaded, well, you will see that I'm actually sitting like I'm talking. You're not seeing anything hovering over my head on that Zoom view. But if you look at the the screen that I'm sharing, then you can see that interaction happen. Okay. So the one thing though is uh, now we have, we have to ask ourselves, well, what does uh, Power Apps need? Well, Power Apps does not really work with all these files. And typically what happens is all these models are, are as I said before, are decomposed in a, number, in a number of image files, texturized files, and that's just way too much information for a, an environment like Power Apps to, to handle. So, in the case of a GLTF file, um, that would need to be packed and reassembled into 
something that Power Apps calls a, or, or that is known as a GLB file. And there are uh, applications online even where you can actually go and um, you know, take a collection of GLTF, both the player and the different textures, just drop it there and you'll get a GLB, uh, a package GLB file. So if I were to just do something like this, where I take all these GLTFs plus the, um, plus the different image files and move them over to this surface over here, then that will just go ahead and, um, and um, package that for me in a way that I can, I can then assemble it uh, into one single file. I'm not gonna go through that process, but you get the idea. And uh, the result then is a single file, which is a GLB file. And if I were to take this and open it, okay, you will have the same effect. So instead of working with now multiple image files and a player, I'm actually now working with an individual uh, compact file. And that's actually what Power Apps requires in order to play a specific um, model, uh, 3D model in, um, in, the, in the application that you will be building. Okay, so same functionality, same zoom capabilities, same definitions, everything, all in a compact single file. Um, any questions up to here? Okay. Um, moving on. Once you have done that, then uh, the other thing that I normally do is we would go into, and let me move this over here. Perhaps I'm not going to replay my slide deck just to make things easier. Then the next thing that we need to talk about really is the different um, power apps mixed reality components. So just like you saw, I had a Windows application, which is a 3D viewer. In Power Apps, there's a corresponding 3D viewer control. And that's what it's called, viewing 3D, um, viewing 3D control. You can find that one specifically under your um, images or under your media uh, collection. So here in the media collection, there's a viewing 3D option. And that's what you would drag to your application. And we'll see how all that works in, in general. Then there's the actual mixed reality control. So the thing that actually allows me to take a model and blend it into my surrounding, there is a control for that as well, okay? And there's the ability to view a shape in mixed reality. So this is particularly where I can actually uh, define uh, a set of parameters for a cube, a cube um, shape, and place that in my physical environment. And it sort of allows me to, for example, I don't know who, who is in the HVAC industry here or any type of industry where you need, for example, cubing capabilities, okay? So if I were to, uh, if I had to go install a commercial refrigerator in a space, I have the ability to program the measures into the shape control and then go and see if it's gonna fit in a particular space before I even uh, you know, plan all the logistics to get that uh, fridge out in, into that particular place where I'm gonna install it. So there is that capability. And then finally, there's a measure in MR control that's all part of the mixed reality control. And the measure in MR allows me to take physical measurements of my environment so I can take uh, things like height, width, um, depth, all those kind of things without the need for having an actual measuring tool, which uh, um, you know traditionally you would take into, into certain places. So um, one example of that where I actually have found it very useful is in uh, if you're taking measurements of uh, small spaces or tight spaces like attics, or, um, or crawl spaces, you know, where it's very hard to maneuver some of those um, measuring tapes, that's somewhere that, um, that this type of uh, feature excels very well, okay? So this brings me to the part of my demo. So 
So in my demo, you will see me take advantage of some of these controls that we've talked about. And uh, hopefully you will see the wow factor of it. But more than anything else, hopefully it sparks um, that interest in you to go back to your workplace or go back to your home and try some of the things that you're going to see here today. Okay. All right, so I'm going to minimize this. And here's my power app surface. So yeah, if you go to make that power apps.com, you sign in, do all those nice things. You sort of land um, at the home page right here where you can create a new Canvas application if you wanted to. Okay, and by the way, the mixed reality controls right now are only supported in Canvas applications. So if you're gonna do a model-driven application, you would have to embed a Canvas application if you wanna do some of the things that you're looking at uh, here today. So I'm gonna choose a Canvas app and I'm gonna give this app a name. Let's say this is a MR uh, SoCal demo. Okay, that's gonna be the name of my app. And I'm gonna choose a phone factor. Now, you could actually create a tablet factor type application. That's entirely up to you. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna use my phone because that's what I have available on my desk. And that's what I'm gonna be using today for some of this demo. Okay, so we'll let the uh, Power Apps design surface, the, the studio um, load, and then we'll go from there. All right. So here's my application surface. Uh, this is a blank app, as you can tell. So all you need to do now is decide how you're gonna lay out your application. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce the uh, 3D viewer control, okay? The, uh, this will be under the media options. So if you scroll down, here will be your um, view in 3D. Before, uh, I'm gonna, do a little bit of a parenthesis here. All these controls that you're seeing here started back in 2019 as PCF controls. These were introduced as PCF controls that the, uh, particularly the MVP community and partners could try out. And then in uh, wave one of 2020 is when they actually released these in, um, in preview and wave two made them uh, GA. So uh, wave two of 2020 made them GA. So there was been a, you know, these have been in production for no more than probably a year now or less than a year. So um, I foresee that these controls are gonna continue growing in capabilities, but uh, you'll see that so far what they have is pretty damn awesome if you ask, if you ask me. So now I'm gonna drop my view in 3D control here. And that's going to create a viewport for me with this control. Right now, it's asking me for a data source. I'll explain some of that in a bit. But what I want you to do is um, I'm going to redimension this. And um, just make it, you know, size-wise palatable for, uh, for everything to work. The first thing that you will notice here is that this particular um, sample model is being taken from Microsoft's own GitHub repository and, um, and brought to, to you by default into this. So this application is actually already playable. If I take this and I look at this particular cube, I can rotate it and do you know, all sorts of nice things with it. But that doesn't start, but that doesn't make my application. I might have more specific uses for what I'm trying to do. Now, this brings me to um, where would you store the actual GLB file? You can store the GLB file anywhere, literally where, where you want. You can have it stored in GitHub. You can store it in SharePoint as an attachment. You can store it in, as an Azure storage blob. You can store it in OneDrive. It's entirely up to you where you want to actually put these, um, these files, uh, you know, internally to your uh, to your um, to your intranet and then if you're actually doing uh, things over your intranet just make sure that you're using uh, certainly some of the um, on-premises data gateway capabilities now I do recommend for um, for simplicity simplicity's sake store these files somewhere in the cloud where you can have access to them 
um, OneDrive is a great place, OneDrive for business, or um, I, I particularly like GitHub because I find it easy to version stuff and what's not so if I wanted to. Now, um, one thing is if you are going to store uh, things in GitHub, this is what a repository sort of look like. So this is my master branch and these are the files that I have up uploaded here. And as I told you before, I'm a big, um, uh, you know, sort of Star Trek fan. So I have, I actually used to have a whole bunch of these ships here. I'll probably reload them and, um, and, and keep them, uh, send links to you guys uh, for those. But uh, here in GitHub, I have that particular file. So I am going to then grab my own uh, source for this file. And as you can tell, I'll, I'm going to do is replace it here. And GitHub kind of has this weird thing where they have uh, the ability to, you know, uh, because everything is stored uh, compressed. If you actually want the raw version of the file, you got to use this raw that GitHub user content .com, uh, uh, you know, URL to get to the raw version of the file, the raw content, uncompressed content. Okay. So once I, once I do that, then you can see that this particular uh, endeavor ship comes to life. And I can do the same things that you saw me doing in 3D Viewer, pinch and collapse and expand and what's not, and uh, shift around, turn around with my mouse um, uh, as it you know as um as it allows me so um i can see the when the wheel spinning already like if you had uh you know inventory in your warehouse that you wanted to uh, digitize and create 3d models with just imagine how easy it would be for uh, to create an application where somebody could just um you know with the click of a mouse or actually with their with their the tip of their finger just go through and see what the products look like and uh, you know, allow for accurate picking inside the warehouse. So that's something to think about for those of you who work in that space, okay? Now, um, but that's, that's good, that's nice. There is actually something that was introduced in, um, actually here in wave two, now that uh, Ed mentioned it. So in wave two, they added the capabilities of having pins. So now I can I can sort of set up you know predefined viewpoints because that's what a pin is to me uh, predefined viewpoints of um, of what might constitute the the front back uh, sides of that particular model that I'm seeing and those points rotate with the model as well once um once I have uh, something in place uh, to do that so. If you go back here, I have a file, which is an Excel file that contains a whole bunch of um, pin information for that I'm gonna add to this model. And I'm opening the file so you can see what it looks like, but it's nothing more than a table with uh, four columns. It has a label, the X pins, the Y pins, and the Z pins, and sort of the coordinate for front left, front right, zero, X point. Now, I haven't tried this. I don't know what if, what's even going to show up, but the, more, the most important thing is if you're going to add uh, pins to a label, if you're going to uh, sort of um, produce some uh, identifiable parameters for that uh, viewpoint, you need, you need to la label this table. And it needs to be an actual Excel table. It can't be just you know, a plain uh, uh, side of it. So. If I go to, um, where is it, table something uh, here, I'm actually under behind my, my controls or my Zoom control. So there is an option up here where you can go and assign a name to this particular table, or you can right click and select the um, define name option uh, somewhere here under insert, okay? But anyways, that's the table. And all I gotta do then in my Power Apps application is uh, if I minimize this, uh, go to the uh, content here and then just do Excel, all right? And say import from Excel. And then I can select that Excel file that I had here with the pins and the coordinate for the pins. 
So what that's going to do is it's going to uh, prompt me for the table. In this case, my my um, my table name is test pins, and just hit connect, and that's going to bring that um, viewpoint or those particular viewpoints in here. Uh, as I said, I didn't try this before. I just have make up a whole bunch of them, but you can see that I can then grab that particular viewpoint and rotate from there if I wanted to. Okay, and it kind of gives me a reference, a 3D reference as to what I'm seeing. That's pretty uh, pretty useful if you um, if you're in the engineering setting where you need to know sort of like the dimensions, the coordinate, the vertical coordinates. A horizontal and certainly the depth of a particular object in space. So, um, and I'm not talking about outer space. I'm talking about you know the um, your, your space, your surrounding space. So um, that's that's uh, that's actually very cool, very interesting. Uh, one of the favorite controls that that I that I can uh, probably point you to initially. It gets you started pretty quick, and as you can see. It does not really uh, take much um, thinking to get this going. Now, in the, the advanced settings, you can you can play with the backgrounds uh, of the um, objects. So, if you prefer like a darker background, wider background, those properties are uh, changeable. And then there is a set of um, a set of uh, uh, advanced properties where you can actually assign code on the when the model loads, when it changes, when uh, when it's selected, et cetera. All right, we're not gonna go through this. This is not a coding exercise in, in my opinion, but if, you, uh, if you're ever interested in, there's tons of documentation on this kind of stuff on the uh, Microsoft Docs website, the Power Apps entry for it. Now, uh, one thing Microsoft is big into, um, what do you call it, uh, accessibility. So these controls, all of them have accessibility capabilities where you can um, assign uh, things like uh, not only tooltips, but you can uh, assign uh, display, uh, where's up here somewhere, here, you alternate text for, um, for accessibility purposes. So make sure that if you, uh, that's something that I actually have strived to do with my apps, especially in my Power Apps applications, where I actually add accessibility information to it. So another thing that um, probably not relevant to this conversation, but that I always recommend is please, please, please just go ahead and rename your controls. Don't use those default ones. So uh, like in this case, this is a control and I just call it view uh, 3D. It's just easy to, um, to do coding around something that is uh, legible in my opinion. All right, so that's that control. The other thing that I wanna, the other control that I wanna introduce right now is the uh, mixed reality control or the view in MR control. And um, for that, we're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna go to the list of uh, control gallery, the control gallery and expand this mixed reality option here. And then we'll see how easy this stuff is. So um, here in view in MR, I'm just gonna drag this out. And believe it or not, this is all you need to do to be able to view this in, in, uh, in your mixed reality environment. So I'm just gonna expand this like this. Some minor design stuff, nothing out of the ordinary, but certainly get the points across. Um, you have the ability to change the uh, label that you see in here. And there's actually certain modes that you can use for this particular control where you can uh, shift it to um, icon plus text. So if you just wanna play with the icon or if you just wanna have the text, you can choose that as part of your design, uh, you know, your application design philosophy. Now, note that I'm gonna use the same source for Endeavor. So now I'm gonna replace this source with the actual github my actual github repository with um, endeavor and now there is the ability as well to switch the unit of measures whether you want to view things in centimeters as as a reference feet inches meters etc and that's how um, you're going to 
uh, obtain the type of measurements from your surrounding anyways, um, from your surrounding environment. So if you are used to the metric system, then choose meters. If you are used to the imperial system, then choose inches. Okay, and furthermore, you can uh, you can either scale to feet or downscale to centimeters if you're using, um, I'm sorry, downscale to feet or downscale to, um, to centimeters if you want. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. That's my application. This is my test app at the moment. The one thing I want to caution you with, and this happened to me a few times when I was testing, you cannot actually use the view and MR control on a, um, on a desktop. You, it's just not possible. So it has to be done from a device. This is something that we've actually, at least uh, Power Apps MVPs have been talking to Microsoft about to have this enabled for desktops. But right now, keep in mind that it only works on your mobile devices. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on file. And um, I'm going to save this application. OK. And here is the Save button. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long. There we go. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna bring up my phone. So here's my phone. And uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna launch Power Apps on my phone. And I'm going to just uh, expand this a little bit so I can get a refresh of all the applications. And you could probably see me doing some of it here. So let's see and hope that this refreshes fairly quick. Okay, there we go. All right, and um, somewhere here, I can see all apps. And here's my MR so-called demo that I just created. So I'm gonna click on this. Uh, one thing that uh, most applications that use any of your device features will do is ask you for permissions to use that particular um, feature on your device. So I'm just gonna allow this to work here and now here is my um my model and i can go ahead and play with the same model on my phone as you can probably see me doing here and you're seeing that being reflected on um on on the screen that you're following now if i click on view in mr this is where the magic really happens so my device automatically becomes uh, enabled for camera. And as you can see here, are the markers on my floor. And let's say I identify a place where hopefully it's, it contrasts enough with what we're doing. So I'm gonna just tap here and put that, um, put that ship here. Uh, watch this, I'm not actually kidding you. You can actually go and stand around this thing and look at the different options. And hopefully you can see me still walking around this thing from where you are. Uh, yeah, I'm in slippers. And there we go. Uh, you can see then that I can get closer to it if I wanted to, and so on. OK? So that's some of the cool stuff we can do. And if you can think about all the applications that that might have in a business setting, uh, I would like you to, to start writing them down and just think about things that you can go on and try at work, okay? Especially if you work with a, um, with a design firm that does, you know, 3D models for, for a living. Or even if you have a warehouse or you have a showroom where you, can, um, where you have things digitized in, into models. Okay, so that's good. That's all nice and good. But let's take a look at something here. If I go back to this app, the first thing I want to do is, uh, by the way, I always get asked, how do I actually display the pin coordinates of that particular model, it's these, uh, these pin coordinates? Um, an easy way to do that is by simply clicking here on the, on the screen. 
So I'm gonna go back here on the screen and you can um, go to the onload or unvisible um, property and type something like um, uh, clear. We're gonna set up a collection for this. So we're gonna call this collection MR pins, okay? And those MR pins, uh, we're gonna bring them into um, into a data table if we want to. So we're just gonna go ahead and insert a data table. Okay. And in that data table, we're gonna move that over here and just link that to um, the the data table that we have over here. So the pin items can come directly, I'm sorry, The uh, this can be linked to the test pins, which is what we did before. And uh, those test pins, um, we all we gotta do is then edit the fields and add the fields that we wanna display. So I want to display every single one of them, that's what we do and add them in, okay? So the one thing here is you can then select this and uh, change the font size to make it palatable for the application that you're building. So uh, that's a pretty simple way to bring in the pins. Um, the next thing is uh, that I always get asked is, well, what if I wanted to capture images of uh, that ship in the, in the space that you put it? Well, the one thing we can do here then, and I know why I actually got a little sidetrack here is here instead of MR pins, we're gonna call this MR pictures. You know, live demos, that's how it goes. Okay. So we actually have cleared a collection, initialized a collection called MR pictures. And the next thing we're gonna do then is we're going to look at the view MR control and we're going to collect the images that we take. So there is an option in here or a, a property that actually allows me to execute a, um, an event called on mixed reality select. So here on mixed reality select, all we're gonna do then is we're gonna do collect, sorry, uh, right here. We're gonna do collect. Um, our collection is called MR pictures. So that should display here. And um, what we're gonna collect this supports the self operator, which is, which makes it pretty simple to use, and all the photos. That's a property that we're gonna collect from there. And as you can see, now the collection is enabled because I initialized it in the um, initialized it in the screen load, and now I'm actually adding the pictures to the collection itself. Now the next thing we can do then is once we've actually done that, we're gonna add a gallery. And I'm gonna use a horizontal gallery just because of space limitations. And I'm going to make uh, bring that to the MR pictures um, itself. So one thing is I'm gonna just drag this gallery down here and resize it slightly so we can see what we're doing. Now, there is, um, there is the option of the images. So one thing we can do here is um, this is going to show uh, uh, grab the URI of that image and bring it into the context of this application once I have it loaded. And that's kind of how um, we're gonna do. There's the labels, the title and the labels, but I don't need that. I certainly don't need a subtitle at this point. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And um, that's all we need the image for now. All right, so let's see how that works. Uh, one thing I tend to do is whenever I put a gallery and there's no, um, there's no information in it initially, you might want to indicate to the user that there's some object there. And I do that through a, a, dot, a dotted line, okay? So it just gives me the shape. So let's see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, go to file. We're going to save this. And every time you save, if you have already shared this app with numerous users, you want to probably republish it. And that's just common stuff. Um, now I don't have to share this with anybody, so I already have it saved. And I'm gonna go back to my uh, phone sharing uh, thing here. So here's my phone image again, and I'm gonna load this app. 
part of what Power Apps does is it prompts you that there's a new version of the app. So I'm gonna tap to load that new version and I'm gonna reload it again. Okay. So we'll let the uh, model load. And uh, all I'm gonna do then is go to view and MR and we'll, we'll do something a little different this time. Uh, don't worry about where I'm gonna place it. We just care about the pictures. So I'm just gonna tap anywhere to place it. Uh, actually, let me go back here for a second. Reload it. Okay, tap any place to, pay, to place it. There we go. And here's the, here's the image. So all I'm gonna do is walk around it and take a few pictures. So as you can see, I'm taking a picture over the image. I can actually get down closer to the floor if I want and get a closer picture. And that's it, Those, I, I took three pictures. So when I go back, um, okay, the, the, um, the pictures did not show up. So give me one second here. Wonder if I have the right version loaded. Oh, you know what? No, I didn't publish it. So here we go. Just need to publish it. Sorry about that. There we go. So I'm gonna go back now and uh, just click on this and reload it. There we go. All right, there's a new, my version on the newer, uh, or my message on a newer version. I'm gonna reload it, see if we have what we need. Okay, there we go. Here where's our labels, our pins. It means I have the right app. And I'm just gonna go ahead and view in MR. So I'm gonna override that model loading. There we go. I'm gonna tap on the surface and here's my model. I'm just gonna take a few quick pictures here. And again, just go down a little bit and get a view of it. There we go. So now I have the, um, the different pictures. I can go back. So Marian, are you uh, showing your phone? Screen? Are you sure? uh, I should have been able, to, I should have been showing my phone. Uh, you, there we go. You missed it? Yeah. I, okay, we, so I can repeat that, no big deal. Yeah, please. So again, close the app, just reload it. Okay. And then uh, again, here are the controls that I had added. So that's my data table with the different uh, pins that I had. And I can go ahead and say view in MR now if I want, and uh, we're going to place this any point here on, the, on my surface. So here's the, uh, here's the picture. I'm going to take one here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take another one over here. I'll probably get closer to the ground, just do one here and um, go back. By the way, if you needed to reset that particular um, uh, viewport there is this control for reset on the upper right i'm not going to click on that obviously but here are the pictures that i just took the three pictures that i took of that um, item now this is not a a class on how you get these things stored to um, sharepoint or anything like that but know that there's tons of content out there with that you can leverage already on how to share this or store these images in either onedrive or sharepoint or any repository that you you would like to okay so very cool uh very um very usable feature but um again i have seen uh, customers using this in settings like showrooms where it's important to know where a um you know where you're going to place something before you make an expensive move to place it there to begin with especially in uh, environments where things are delicate and they, they're breakable you can definitely, um, uh, you know, do this type of imaging and get an idea where things are going to be, uh, you know, placed before you you really place them. Okay.
All right. Any questions so far? All right, I'm gonna close this up and then let's go back to power ups here for a second. How are we doing in time? We're good, uh, we're good, Marianne. All right, so I'm gonna add a new screen here, not a blank screen. And um, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna go to my mixed reality controls here and I'm gonna add the view shape in MR so we can we can see that as well. Okay. So basically this is sort of like um, the ability to place, it allows me to place a cube in a space. If I have to do cubing, I can actually um, figure out how the, that particular cube is gonna work. The only one thing that I don't quite like about this control is you can you can actually um, well, there's a couple of things. You can predefine this, or you can add um, you can add sliders to your app. So, for example, if I wanted to add a slider, you know, or some mechanism for uh, for a user to um, to add information about the cube, I could add three sliders here. You know, one simple one here. I could add, and this one could be something like, um, you know, something like uh, width or size, uh, or put, uh, yeah, uh, length. Could do something like that. Actually, let me double check here. So you have the width, the height, and the depth. So we'll use the same terminology, uh, width. Okay. You can copy paste things. So all I gotta do is highlight this, control C, control V, and then move it out of, uh, to another place. And then the height and the depth. So we can not take this again and create another control here and just call this depth. Okay, so we have our three measurements uh, for this particular slider. And then what you can do then is here in the in the in the shape width, you can put variables that refer to the values of this control. Now, I'm not going to go through all that exercise again, but that just that's just to give you an idea on the kind of things that you can do. Um, I'll, I like to bring them bring these things as examples because I, I get asked very often and very. Uh, what, how do you go about, you know, making these values uh, sort of like dynamic instead of a fixed value? Okay, and that's how you can you can control the the um, the viewport of the of the application. So again, here are the controls that I put on my screen. Here's my view shape in MR. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the screen up just to make it the primary screen. And so we can see how that works. I'm gonna save this again. I'm gonna publish this. This time I, I'm not going to forget about that. And now I'm gonna bring up my, my phone as well. So here, if I go to MR, so call demo again, which is the app I'm doing, there's a newer version of the app. So we're gonna load that version. And uh, there we go recall it and here is my my cube um, i don't know how many of you have done power apps applications in the past but you can you know kind of play with these sliders assign them uh, to variables and then make those variables um, part of the xyz in that particular space so i had only defined a cube of one by one by one i didn't change the values so let's see this loading Hopefully it doesn't take that long. Some of these controls are a little um, heavy in the in the sense of um, of uh, you know execution heavy. So you just gotta be aware of that. Um, make sure that your device is properly like everything else, like any other computer. 
make sure it has the right amount of memory and what's not available to do things. But this is taking a little longer than I expect. Let me reload it. Okay, so here it is. All right, so if I tap anywhere to place this cube, this is what you get. Since my unit of measures were meters, then you can go and see the different things and how this is gonna fit. So think about if you have shelves that you would like to um, position in a warehouse or what's not, this is the kind of stuff that this is good for. Um, again, you have the picture control, sorry about that. You have the picture control, so you have the ability to take pictures and store those no different than what I just did for um, for the uh, you know for the 3D model. Think of this as another 3D model. It's just it's defined slightly different from uh, you know this is this one is actually input by by the power apps um, you know by the power apps platform as opposed to you having to actually take an image and place it into into the app so you know very cool stuff and it will help you with uh, things like cubing or dimensioning a space or even um, allowing you to do things like calculating shelf capabilities that kind of stuff all right very simple to use by the way as you can tell and finally um, the other control that I wanted to show you is uh, the measure in MR. That's another one that I, um, you know, that I initially, that's actually the first control I started playing with when mixed reality came out because it was, um, we did a hackathon uh, when there were in PCF version and um, did something for around COVID at the time. It was a hackathon for COVID. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new screen here. And this is a blank screen. And again, some of these things are very, very simple to use. So if I go ahead and go to the uh, insert, I can then add the measure in MR control. Okay. So there's a couple of things that you need to learn about this control. Again, uh, you can control things like the, um, unit of measure that you're measuring in. You can control things like, uh, or actually the measuring type, you can be calculating an area. You can be gathering uh, distances. You can be uh, gathering uh, free form measurements, or you can actually uh, gather volume, okay? Um, as far as area goes uh, or distance, what you will do is selecting uh, different points within a, um, within a an environment. So again, let's say I'm selecting distance. Okay. The way you uh, the way you collect these distances is in a collection. So that's kind of like the primary mechanism for uh, data gathering. You would initialize a collection, and then you would incorporate the measures into that collection, just pretty much like I did the uh, the picture. So let's just take a look at. Um, how we would do that in this particular screen. Uh, if I go to the on visible and initialize a collection, okay, that's that would be the collection. Then here in the measure in MR, I can then go to on. Uh, on change or on mixed reality select actually. So every time this is selected inside the mixed reality context, I can do uh, collect in my measurements um, collection. And I can do self that, um, and I have self that measurements that, um, you know, you can choose your, your poison here, either height, length, segments. In this case, I want segments. And that's how my collection would probably um, allow me to gather that information. All right. And you can display that in a data set just like we did this now. 
but I want to show you more than anything else how the control behaves in real life. So we can go ahead and save here and publish this and publish this version of the app. Oh, one thing I didn't do. I'm going to move it up just because I am not adding any navigation or controls to it. So we're going to move it up to be the first screen. And once again, I'm going to go back to save and publish. OK. So um, here on my device, let me make sure I bring this up. I'm going to actually load the MS. Uh, this so called version. So hopefully this will give me a, um, a notification here to load the new version. There we go. And I'm going to reload. And this is what this looks like. So if I click on measure in MR, I'm measuring distances. So I can point the device to any particular space. And let's say I want to measure from here. OK. You can see now uh, right here that. Uh, plus sign, there we go. I can start measuring the distance in centimeters or in meters in this case, or centimeters of this carpet. So boom, I can capture that. And I can see that that distance right there is two meters, uh, 2.15 meters. So two meters, 15 centimeters, if you want to go that route. So here is the Here's what that looks like in, um, in, in that context. But I can then just go and join from this point. And I can measure from there on if I want the distance across the room. So I can see that that's 1.62 meters. I've actually done, um, you know, I've actually done the real life measurement of those things. And it's pretty darn accurate. I can tell you that much. So that's something that you can then submit. This submit button then will uh, move it down to the application collection. And if I had the controls displaying the data for those uh, segments, I would get that information right into that data collection. OK. And um, this concludes really all my um, walk through the different MR controls. There is uh, more information about this. I actually talk about these things in, in much detail on, on my YouTube channel. So just go ahead and check that out. But if you are not a fan of YouTube, you can always go and look up uh, this information in Microsoft Docs. There's tons of material about it as well. Also check my fellow MVPs, um, their YouTube channels or their blogs. They are pretty good at, um, at publishing information and little tricks and nuggets that they've found about these things. So. Once again, thank you for having me today and, and um, I appreciate the time. Questions? Yeah, I saw a couple of questions. Uh, Ravi, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask that question. Uh, so you're basically asking, uh, is Mariana going to share this application so you can just use it in your cell phone? Uh, my pleasure. Yeah, just to fill the app, that's all, nothing, to, <laughs> nothing beyond that. Pardon me? Just I want to feel the app if you can share it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will export the um, the application and send it and include it with all the material I'm going to upload. I appreciate it. Not a problem. So, Mariana, how you, you're showing us the measurement, right? Yeah, how you can do the measurements? How precise? Mm -hmm. Or what's the least it can go to, like centimeters or? Yeah, so you can, in the imperial uh, system, you can use inches. Okay. In the um, metric system, you minimum unit is centimeters. That's an awesome, awesome feature. So. Yeah, and um, accuracy, uh, when the, let me put it this way, when the controls first came out, when it was first GA in uh, wave one, wave two 2020, I think it was off by like any given uh, any given point in time it was off by plus minus two centimeters in the metric system, plus two and a half inches in the um, in the imperial system. So 
ultimately, if you're going to rely on, on accuracy at that level, uh, that, that was not acceptable. And I know these guys have done, these guys, Microsoft have done tremendous amount of work to make these things as accurate as possible. So it was, uh, it was really good. Now I think they're off by like millimeters, very, very small number on the metric system and very like less than quarter inch on the, um, on the uh, on the imperial system. Good deal. Yeah. And still continue to to add more uh, levels of accuracy to it. It also keep in mind that because this stuff is device dependent, uh, of course there are uh, you know cell phone units and and tablet units that have some incredible cameras. So I think also you got to think about the hardware that you're going to be running these applications on if you're going to rely on a degree of accuracy. And as cameras and the devices are getting more sophisticated, believe me, this is going to become more and more reliable. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mariano? Yes, sir. Uh, do you, do, have you ever worked on uh, the, the Halo lens? No, I have not. I have not worked on HoloLens. I wish I had uh, three or four thousand dollars to buy me one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, um, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, they are super expensive. Um, I think Microsoft, if I can, if I can make some comments here, I think Microsoft hedged uh, their bets on HoloLens being more of an industrial type product, where you can use it more on industrial setting. Um, commercial setting rather than it being a consumer um, a consumer product, which is originally the intent um, that they came out of the gate swinging with HoloLens. I think uh, they had more traction or they actually gained more traction in the commercial industrial setting than they, than they have in the, in the consumer market, because obviously these things are, those devices are super expensive. I mean, for, uh, for the average consumer. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And uh, one more question from me. Um, are there any websites like, you know, for Power Apps and Power BI, there is a gallery that is available publicly where you can go in and see the different people who have submitted their reports, right? Are there dashboards and things like that where you can see mm -hmm. it completed? And sometimes they give you the source file, sometimes it's just the screenshots. Is there something similar to uh, this kind of? Uh... Yes, so I think you're seeing my screen right now. Let me just minimize this because I have the zoom controls in the way. But if you go to um, powerusers.microsoft.com, I believe that's the, that's the um, entry point to the Power Apps community. So here is the Power Apps community. And I, in the Power Apps community, you will find, um, I haven't been in a while, but you will find over here the gallery. I think they probably move it to this go to menu. Okay, so you can go to the community gallery. I think it's somewhere around here, Power Apps portals, product community blog. Demo extravaganza. In demo extravaganza, you'll find some of it, but here's the galleries, okay? And then here's the community app samples. So I think those are your two resources that you're looking for, galleries and community app samples. Okay, there I just chose community app samples, and I think these are um, future apps. You can see all the apps. And somewhere around, I think they also have you know, perhaps some mixed reality stuff that you will find from the community that has been posted. Okay. Right. And on YouTube, if you go to youtube.com and you type in, um, I don't remember what channel we placed it, but let me just go to my channel and you go to, um, down here, you go to, uh, no, that's not what I want. I don't want uh, the sound to stop this for now. So um, if we go down to 
other appearances. There is um, the hackathon that I was talking about, the spacer, our, our team was called FlowFam Hack, and uh, the hackathon was hacked for good. But spacer is where we sort of demonstrated initially um, all the mixed reality controls when they were in PCF uh, preview mode. So and go and check it out. It's actually a great story that we um, we we um, sort of uh, research from what was happening around COVID. Um, this was during the summit business application summit of 2020. So it's fairly recent. Uh, go check it out. Actually, a good story and uh, show some good use of the mixed reality controls as well. Okay. Sounds good. Actually, let me put the link in the chat. I should be able to do that, right? Any other questions in the meantime? I think Winter is asking the pretty much the same question I was asking about the measurements. And uh, Mariana, you were just mentioning that uh, uh, centimeters is what the least is, at least at this point, and it depends on the kind of device and also sometime in the future, they're going to make it a little more. Yeah, that is correct. I, I mean, ultimately, like every product, right? Um, keep in mind that this is what they've done in two years, give or take of development. So I, I, only, I only see an optic of this uh, going forward. This, you know, unless some severe bug is introduced that throws off things. Right. Uh, this is just going to keep going up and up. And the applications that you're going to see coming out of this are going to be even even more mind-boggling than, than what I showed you today. Yeah. Yeah. Any okay. other Anybody else? So my... Let me ask a question, Mariano. Yeah, sure, please do. From... from from a business standpoint, how are you, how are you educating businesses that this is even possible? Because I think the problem is companies don't even know what, you know, they don't know what they don't know. So how do they know that this is a reality now and it's not just some futuristic thing and, and there's practical applications? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So what I normally do is, first of all, I try to understand what business the company is in. So I had a demo with a trucking company and part of what, um, part of their problem was to, uh, you know, they're constantly working on warehouses and, and trying to figure out how they get product from A to B and, but more importantly, how they plan out their, their trucks and, and the space in their trucks. So um, I am a big believer in proofs of concept. You're not gonna sell Basically, you're not going to sell the, the, the control, you're not going to sell the feature, but you're going to sell is the actual business benefit of it. So I normally arm myself with um, approval concepts before I get in front of the customer. And, um, you know, you saw me put this together in, what, an hour? Well, mm -hmm. if I were to actually sit down without all the talking that I'm doing here, and put it together will probably take me 15 minutes just to put a decent proof of concept in place. Yes, the complex part is gathering the models and making sure you're working with relevant data to the client, which is the second point that I was gonna make. Make sure when you get in front of a client to demo anything, you're working with relevant data. Like I can show up to a trucking company showing Star Trek, right? So right. I, I probably have to get things like, uh, you know, different models for containers or different models for uh, and dimensions for products that they that they are going to fit on those um, on those containers, and that's how you you really convince customers. When you when you can when you can not talk about the technology more than uh, and focus more on the business side of what they're trying to resolve, I think you your chances of succeeding are pretty high. The technology then becomes second nature to the customer. But that's, you know, if you're asking me from a personal perspective, how do I sell this? I don't sell this. I sell the business value. And, and I arm myself to prove a concept 
to go show the customer rather than talking yeah. about the control or the you know the model or this and that they already some customers believe it or not already have that stuff in mind they kind of have an idea that that's possible they just don't know or care about the technology underneath it they 